Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers with Green Acres Pest Control. You got to see me messing with my lighting <laughs> just a little bit. I might need to get some better lighting here one day. Hope everybody's doing all right tonight. Still kind of trying to set everything up real quick. Back door open. Um, let's see if I can. Let's check on some stuff real quick. Let's see. Still kind of setting everything up. I like to get all my uh, web pages and everything I like to use. So I'm ready. So if I need to share anything and show pictures or whatever, I can. Good evening, D. I hope you're doing all right tonight. It's been a while since I've seen you in chat. Hope everybody's doing good tonight. Got a few people here. I'm online on time. Well, pretty much on time. Maybe four or five minutes late tonight. Hope. Back door open. That thing's gonna make a lot of racket, no matter what. I guess. Got my echoes and stuff hooked up to where uh, it'll uh, play sounds when people open and shut the door. So. So anyway, first I want <clears throat> to start everything off tonight with saying that uh, you should go to my channel if you're here. Of course you're here. You should subscribe right here. Hit the subscribe. Hit the notification bell when it pops up so you guys can get notified of when I'm going live. Because here I am. I'm live. Huh. No, that's not true. So Razorblade asks <clears throat> in chat, uh, of course, this is what we do this for, is so that um, everybody can kind of talk to me. And But uh, Razorblade says, are bed bugs similar to vampires? If you kill the head bed bug, do the rest die? Of course not. You got to kill them all. Equal opportunity. Kill them all. Every one of them. Don't leave no survivors. Men, women, and children. So, at least that's what I do. <laughs> Except for the ones I keep in a little jar right here on my desk. So when people ask, what do they look like? I can show them. But. Anyway. Actually, uh, I wanted to talk too about TikTok. So I've, I've been doing a lot of TikTok videos. I know Dee actually had said that, that she liked to, to see the videos that I do. So if you go to my channel, I'll show you uh, the shorter versions of, of some of the videos I've been doing. So if you scroll down through my channel here, if you go to Green Acres, it's uh, youtube.com. So if I, uh, let me see, I'll type it in chat real quick. YouTube.com slash Green Acres PC. Then you go over to videos. You see all these videos here. So I've got a lot of these weird like vertical videos. These are called shorts. So YouTube has a new video system that's built a lot like TikTok. So that when you, if you were to go to TikTok, TikTok, this is my TikTok channel. So that's linked in this description below and everything. So these videos, you see how this one here is a vertical video. And then this one here is the same video, vertical. So what I've been doing is I've got a lot of videos I've been sharing on TikTok. Like see here's some bed bug jobs I did. They're not even on YouTube. So if you want to see some pretty crazy stuff, I recommend you go check me out on TikTok because I've got a lot of little videos. And I've got some. Uh, this is from one of my very first videos I've ever did on YouTube. I kind of divided it up, split it up into four parts and showed that. But uh, TikTok, of course, is only like minute long videos or like 58, 59 seconds. The same as these ones I've been putting here are about 58 seconds long. See, but I do have the one that just went live two days ago on Tuesday, free inspections. And then I have the live streams that I save. So all my live streams, there I am again from last week. So anyway, I thought I would just show that to you guys just so you know that there are other ways to see some things that I don't actually put on YouTube. 
all the time. So anyway, let's get to, I've got quite a few people in tonight. I'm actually on time for once. I've actually got people in chat, which last week we didn't have very many people in chat. I had a few, but I was quite a bit later. I was about an hour late last, last week. Um, but Gene says, hi, I love your videos. I'm dealing with bed bugs because my neighbor disappeared and they're coming over here. So, um, you need to treat your home with something to keep the bed bugs out. You can do preventative for bed bugs. You don't have to spray just to get rid of them. You can actually treat to, uh, prevent them as well. I do preventative treatments all the time. I, uh, schools and, and places where there's a lot of people that go in and out all the time, businesses, um, I do a lot of rental homes where they have people in and out of the rental home and you can actually uh, do preventative in these places to try to keep the bed bugs out. So it is possible to do prevention. Uh, the fisherman says, I hope you're doing well, Mr. Akers. Have you ever used alpha? I don't think so. I'm not going to try to pronounce that word uh, or any other non anticoagulants for rodents and if so what do you think of them okay so i've only ever used one rodenticide and it's a it is an anticoagulant um so bradificoium is the active ingredient that's i've only ever used that i like it uh mike m says i had a lady about 46 year old ask me to spray her crotch crickets next appointment which is tomorrow what should i do she is kind of hot come on now mike Let's try to keep it at least PG rated. <laughs> it's after nine o'clock, but it's not nine, after nine o'clock everywhere. <laughs> oh, the questions I get tonight. I think I'm on too early. So let's see. What was I going to talk about? Oh, I'll tell you what. I have um i've had a lot of people contact me recently i actually talked to a lady today who contacted me about a question on my amazon page now i'm, I'm not this is not like a shameless plug or whatever but if you go to uh, amazon.com let's see i'll copy it and paste it here so if anybody wants to see it while they're in the chat room but um these are my products, not my products. These are products that are owned by people who sell things on Amazon. So what I do is I go around Amazon and I try to find products that I use that work for me that you can purchase yourself because it is difficult to find products that are easy to get a hold of for general pest control other than ordering through like you know, uh, do your own, do it yourself. Um, and some of the other websites out there and some of them are pretty expensive shipping. And so I try to find things that are available through, uh, through Amazon. And so this page has different things that I recommend things that I use. Uh, so if you scroll down, I've got like tick control. So I just did a video a couple weeks ago on ticks. And so every time I do one on some new kind of pest that I have never actually done, like a do it yourself for, I will add a category here. So it's something that I always have. So I've got like tick control, I've got bed bug supplies, ant control, stink bugs, spider control, bed bugs for New York and Canada, uh, lice, carpenter bees, bird mites, springtails, cockroaches, mice, termites, fleas, and uh, and flea control. So, so for the guy that asked earlier, um, fisherman, you were asking about anticoagulants. These are what I use for mice. So this is the actual... Uh, product that I use, which is Talon Weatherblock. And so if you click there, see it's uh, Weatherblock XT, Rodenticide. It's um, it's Bradificoium. In fact, if you look right there, you can actually see, I don't know if you guys have it zoomed in enough to be able to read that or not, but Bradificoium is the active ingredient. That's what I use to eliminate mice. That's actually what is in my vehicle right now to eliminate mice. And so it's a Syngenta product. Syngenta makes it. So for to answer that question. Um, I don't sell these products. You know, these aren't actually like, I don't keep this stuff stored. I don't sell them. This is something that I do for you guys so you can find what you need. I, I do make like a 3% cut, I think is with the, um, with the actual like sales commission 
for any of this stuff if you click on and you and you click any of these products. I had my first uh, Pagan Root says I had my first bed bug three weeks ago. I haven't had any ever in my life. Uh, what do you recommend for ants? Oh, I tore my house up searching for them. I found you ASAP and ordered the Crossfire. Cool. Have you got it yet? I'd like to know how long it took you to get it where you ordered it from. Um, Dee Dee says, how can we prevent birds from attacking the plants? Peppers. Oh, that's hard. So there's a net you can use um, that's usually what I recommend using. So if you get like a, oh man, what is it called? Um, black plastic netting for plants. Um, it's this stuff right here, I think is what it is. Um, that might be, no, that's too big. So they make a net kind of like this that's smaller. Let me see if I can find it. Like this. I think this is it right here. This stuff right here. This is it. Um, and it's overstock. It's selling that. But basically what you want to do to keep birds and stuff off your plants is you want to put like a net over them. If you're trying to grow like peppers or something like that, then, um... That's usually what I recommend, and the reason I recommend that is because, not because I've used it myself, but because I have customers that have used it, and it's worked. It keeps the deer off of their plants. It keeps the uh, the birds and stuff from getting in. Now, it's not going to stop some smaller things like pests and stuff from getting in, like chipmunks and stuff like that, but it will stop birds and deer and stuff from tearing up your, your pepper plants and, and things you're trying to grow. So um, that is something you can use, but it's it's like a net. You could get it at Lowe's. I think Lowe's sells it. Hmm, excuse me, Home Depot. Uh, different, you know, retail stores will sell it, especially this time of year since everybody's growing their gardens. Pagan Root says, "What do you recommend for ants?" So I recommend Alpine. So like I said, if you go back to this page, I do have ant control because I actually have a video. Let me show you. I've got a. Um, so if you go to my YouTube channel and you go to videos, you can actually search right here. Now, I don't know how it works so much on the phone because I'm a, I'm a computer nerd. So if you search my channel right there, this, this is all videos that, that are on my channel. So you're searching only my channel. You're not searching all of YouTube. And you just search ants. And here are so how to keep ants out of your kitchen. Where do ants come from? Why do I have ants in my kitchen? That's a video I made. Why can't exterminators kill my ants? Learn tricks of the trade. So this will teach you some different tricks. But this is the video right here that this is the most recent one that I have made. This is uh, just two months ago. So this is a video I recommend you go watch. If I click it here and not watch the ad, let me see, share. Let me see, I'll copy the link and then I'll post it to you in chat. But that's the video for ants. Um, Alton says, seeing bed bugs or mites and ductwork, overdue for cleaning, having trouble finding what is in my house. Um, ductwork's probably mites, maybe. Um, that's probably my guess. That's what I would go with if it's if it's things coming out of your ductwork, because mites will get in your ductwork sometimes. Dust mites and stuff like that. Also spider mites, um, bird mites. Uh, I'll tell you a story. I did a job one time. This was several years ago. I was in my 20s. And it was a a bird had gotten in and died uh, on top of a ventilation duct for a, a, a warehouse type building. And every time the fans would cut on, the, the air would circulate inside the ductwork. And the bird mites that had been living on the birds and around the birds would actually get blown down in the, the restrooms when people would be using the restroom because of the way the ductwork hooked up and because of where the bird had died in the ductwork. And so it's possible that bird mites can get in if there's a bird living near a, uh, like an exchange going outside. Um, if they've gotten in somehow and are living on top of like a screen or something like that, that's what had happened in this one building is they had actually knocked a screen in from outside even though it was screened at one time, the birds actually pushed their way through and actually built their nest on top of the screening. So uh, I had to go out there and get the birds out and fix the screen back to the way it needed to be. And uh, and yes, I, I actually ended up infesting my truck with bird mites. 
because they get on your clothing. They get everywhere. You can't really see them. They're, they're so super tiny, you can't really see them. And uh, they do bite you. They can't live off of humans, but they can bite you. If you have chickens or anything like that, they, the chicken poultry mites and, and uh, pigeon mites can actually live uh, some nine months. Some say even longer than nine months, but nine months is about what I have found on everything I've looked up. Um, I've never seen bed bugs in duckwork, though, but I have seen mites in duckwork. Um, Pagan says he got the uh, crossfire from Amazon, took five days. Let's see here. Let's do this. Crossfire. Does crossfire immediately kill the bed bugs after direct contact, or does it take time? It takes five minutes, approximately five minutes for a bed bug to die, but I have seen them die sooner. Uh, Alicia says, hello, Jason. After I sprayed a month ago, I just got two bites on one shoulder, another on my neck. I just sprayed again, but only my bed. Do I have to do the full room? Okay, so by full room... So this is another thing I've seen recently on some of my comments is that people are recommending to others to use Crossfire and spray all over their carpet, all over their floor and everything. But that is actually not the proper way to use Crossfire. Uh, Crossfire is a crack and crevice treatment tool, which means you treat inside the cracks and crevices all around uh, the baseboards of the room, around uh, window frames, um, around the molding, you know, where the molding actually meets the wall uh, in the crack there. Um you treat your headboard, footboard, bed rails. You treat your mattress, box spring, uh, inside and out of the box spring. And that's the only spot you need to treat. Don't treat, you know, by whole room, I don't want you to think that I mean to treat your floors and your ceiling and your walls and everything, too. You don't need to do that. Bed bugs don't live in those places. Bed bugs live in the cracks, in the crevices. If you put the chemical in the cracks, in the crevices, you're going to kill your problem because the bed bugs want to live there. They don't want to live out in the open where they're going to get smushed. They want to live down in a crack uh, where they're safe. Um, and so, yeah, I would recommend if you're if you're getting bites and it's been a month, I would recommend treating again. I would treat baseboards and around windows and stuff too like you normally would. It doesn't take that much chemical to do it, and that's what I would do personally. Um, Fisherman says, here in Canada, we're a bit more strictly regulated. We can only use Bradificoium and inside structures. Well, yeah, that's the same way it is here. So we can use Bradificoium as long as it's inside of a bait station. So like you get rodent bait stations um, like... So actually, so like this is the one I use. I use the Protector Rat Station. This are, this is a really good outside bait station. You could also get one of these. These are really rugged. These are great. These are fantastic bait stations. Um, you can get these, set them up outside, and the rats will go in them and they'll die. And you, an animal's not going to get into that, but very rarely will an animal. Now the problem with these, if you don't, if you're not careful where you put them, and someone backs a truck or a car over it, it'll ruin them. But other than that, these are actually one of the best bait stations on the market. And they're very rugged. They can put it. They, you could put them through a lot. Um, by the way, have you ever used one-way doors to get rats out of structures? They allow for. Oh no, I've never used one-way doors. I just kill them. I uh, I will put if I have a problem with a lot of rats. Oh, you know what? You can't see my screen. Let me sh let me share this with you. So these are what I meant by the bait stations. I use the protector bait station. These I've got a lot of these, but I was actually considering switching over to these for my um, commercial buildings because they get so much action, so many people and stuff around outside, and not only that, but vehicles and stuff. I, I have a, um, a building I do where they get a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, it's a, like a loading dock where they have trucks and stuff, and the rats and stuff love to go in around the garage doors of a loading dock, and so it's good to put a bait station near the loading dock doors to keep the rats from going into the warehouse, and so these are actually really good to put in areas like that. But that's what I usually use for rats or, or bait stations. And that's inside a structure. Now, by inside structures, are you are you saying that you have to use bait inside a building? I mean, this this technically, I mean, this is a bait station. As long as you're using it in a bait station, the label says that's what you're supposed to do. So this product right here is what we're talking about. Um, this is the active ingredient in uh, is uh, Bradificoium. And so if you click this and you actually read the label, now I don't know if, I don't think you can read the label on Amazon. Let me see. No, I don't think you can. You have to go to a couple other spots. But, um, but yeah, if you read the label of this, it, it actually requires that you use it in a bait station, even if you use it inside. Um, Pagan Root says, I sprayed my baseboards in my house. 
with the crossfire i have not seen any bed bugs at all just the, just the first one from three weeks ago so you haven't had any since three weeks ago you haven't had any since you treated is this what you're saying pagan i'm just trying to figure it out if that's what you're saying or not i'm sorry um Alton says something's been biting me in my sleep driving me nuts crossfire applied long baseboards but suspecting gaps in the floorboards vents etc so that's not something you need to worry about if you've treated your bed so when you all right so a lot of people ask me um when they call me for a bed bug job they'll say uh what do you need me to do do you need me to take out all of my clothes do you need me to um you know open up all my dresser drawers do you need me to move furniture do you need you know all these different things because if you read a lot of these checklists on websites that you go to a lot of them will say things like um you know you need to do all these these real crazy long checklists and i don't do that all i do when i go in to do a house for bed bugs uh i all the thing i ask my customer to do is remove their sheets covers comforters stuff like that pillows and things off the bed so when you go in it basically is just a bare mattress and box spring I pick up the box spring in the mattress and I clean. I I, uh, I treat all around it the the seams of the mattress all around the box spring. I treat the the headboard, footboard, bed rails, and the uh, the legs of the bed so that when you lay in the bed, the bed bugs want to come and bite you while you're in the bed, and they have to crawl over the bed to get to you. They have to crawl up a bed leg. They have to crawl across a bed rail. They have to crawl across a box spring. They have to crawl across a mattress to get to you. And they've tracked through so much crossfire that by the time they actually do get to you, while they might still bite you, they die. And so you don't have to worry if there's a bed bug trapped down in a crack. You know, if you, if you believe that the reason that you're still getting bit is because bed bugs are hiding in cracks. Well, bed bugs hide in the wall, too. You can't possibly get to them inside the wall. You know, if they're in the wall, there's lots of different ways that bed bugs can get out from inside the wall. They can come out around uh, the edges of maybe a crack in the sheetrock or plaster. They can come out around your crown molding. They can come out around your baseboards. They can come out around your light sockets or your uh, power outlet sockets. So there's lots of different ways bed bugs can get in and around uh, rooms. And even if you dust in these receptacles in different places, a lot of times they can avoid the dust and get through it anyway. And so the, the real trick is to treat the area where the person is going to be resting for more than a half hour to 45 minutes. So typically your beds, your uh, sofas, love seats, um, you know, places that people are going to be frequent. Now, actually, since since 2020 and all the crazy things that have happened that year, people have been working from home, and I've found bed bugs actually living around computer desks, around computer chairs, um, and like this, like this one here has these cushions like this. You see, like they'll get in these. I found them in these little cre creases of these cushions. Even though it's a computer chair, it's not something you would really think of as a place that bed bugs would live. But I have absolutely found bed bugs living on computer chairs just within the last, you know, 365 days, just within the last year. It's actually really common to find them there now. Um, so these are places to look out for when you're treating your own home or if you're an exterminator treating someone else's home is pay attention to these spots like this on these cushions and even on couches where they have these head cushions and stuff, they'll get into those too. Um, so let's see. Uh, Deli says, if I spray Crossfire once a week, how much do I need to apply in one month? If I spray Crossfire once a week, how much do I need to apply in one month? I only treat a house once a month, so I don't treat every week. You can because the label of Crossfire allows for weekly treatments, but you don't have to treat it every week. You could treat once a week or you can treat once a month, but I recommend treating once a month. If Actually, if you're going to treat more than once a month, then treat twice. Treat once every other week. So if you treat the first treatment, you skip a week, and then you treat another treatment in the second week. So that way, you've got, so, so one week, you skip week two, you treat week three, skip week four, treat week five, and so forth, so that you're going every other week, because bed bugs hatch on a six to ten day cycle, and the crossfire will not kill the eggs. So... You need to treat once a month. But once a month works. That's all I do. You know, people call me, and I come out, I treat their house, and I'll tell them. 
I heart you. <laughs> anyway, so the way it works is that when the... Um, I always tell people, just call me if you have any more problems within 35 to 40 days. So I give people even a week past when the chemical should have already lost its effectiveness to make sure they're not getting any more bites. If they're still getting bites, then I go back and do the follow-up. But there's no reason to charge anybody, anybody any extra money if they don't have any more problems. And I very, very rarely have to go back for a follow-up. Uh, last year, I only did maybe five or six follow-ups over the entire year. Uh, this year, since the year started in January, I think I've only done two. So it just doesn't happen very often. Most of the jobs I do, I don't have to go back and do a follow-up. Most of them. Uh, Didi says, what's a simple roach killer? Man, the best roach killer is Alpine. This stuff is amazing. So I'll tell you a story. So let's see. Let's go to roaches. Where is roaches? There it is right there. So if you go to here, cockroach. So a simple thing like a bait, Vendetta is really good. Vendetta is really good. I've got that here and Advion, but I love Vendetta Plus because it has Nygard, which is a growth regulator. It is amazing. It's really, really, really good uh, for bait. And I've got videos to show how to bait. If you go to my channel, um, I actually have videos on roaches. So if you go to like roach, roaches, uh, roaches, this is a myth. Uh, how to identify roaches. Um, why roaches infest electronics and how to stop them from getting into those, how to prevent roaches. All right, how to get rid of German cockroaches. If you're talking about German roaches, these are this is my German roach video. And those are the ones most people ask questions about because they're the hardest ones to get rid of. And that's the picture that you see there in the thumbnail. That's a picture of a German roach. And so, um, and then I've got this one here. If you go to Cockroach Monday, which is a series I did, um, it shows how to bait for roaches, and that's Vendetta. That's what I've got in my hand is a, is a tube of Vendetta. Mouse bait, I mean roach bait. And I show how to bait for them. But the chemical that I use, the chemical of choice, is Alpine. So I'll tell you, I did a restaurant one time. And I had used Alpine on roach cleanouts before. Um, and so what happened was the guy called. And I went out one night when they were getting ready to close the restaurant. Right like 10, 30, 11 o'clock. They're getting ready to close up. And I went in there. And when I went in the basement, uh, the way they have their restaurant is you go in on the main level. But then when you go down into the basement, that's where they do all their dishwashing. They have like their, their sinks and everything set up down there. They have their office for like all their paperwork, taxes, stuff like that. They do down in the basement, payroll and all that stuff is done downstairs. And the roaches love to live around bath bathrooms, kitchens, uh, places that you do a lot of dishwashing because roaches, German roaches are actually attracted to water. So what you do is the, um, you, I treat, so, so the roaches were all over the floor. They were all in all the drains. They were living around, they had like some fluorescent lights um, on the ceiling. They were living all around the fluorescent lights. They were living on the wall, crawling on the wall behind the, the sink where they do dishes. They were all over the basement. They were just all over the place. And they were upstairs near the frying machines where they do all their deep fat frying. They were living around the beer. They have like a bar, so they have like a beer dispenser. Uh, they were living all around the beer. They were living pretty much everywhere that they really you don't want roaches living if you're trying to run a restaurant. And I went in there with Alpine WSG, I used Alpine and I used Vendetta, and I had a roach-free establishment after one treatment. The stuff's amazing, I love it, and they haven't had roaches in over three years. So that's how long they've been a customer of mine, is over three years. And they've never had a roach since that very first night. So, it's a miracle. It's great stuff. I've never had anything like it. Um, so Fisherman says, by structures, I meant houses, buildings, we can only use... Uh, so that's not Bradificoium is what you mentioned. You bromaldolone and a few others outside in yards, etc. We always have to have them in bait stations, though, too. Yes. So this uh, Bradificoium is actually, it's not for, it used to be for burrows a long time ago, but it's not anymore. You, you have to use it in bait stations. 
So that's similar to me, but uh, you could use it in bait stations. Pagan Root says, my mom is dealing with field mice infestation. She is using glue traps, but so far she's only catching baby mice. Can you give me any recommendations for her to catch the adults? Um, I mean, snap traps you could use to catch mice. Uh, you could use live traps. Um, let's see. Um, sorry, it, it blocked one of your messages, Pagan Roots, because you cursed and you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> it won't let you, it won't let it post if you do that. But I did read your question about the, the, uh, bed bug in the living room. But, um, but as far as the mice go, uh, I'll tell you a trick. So let's look at a, let's look at a mouse trap. Let's look, let's pull up over here. So I'm going to, I'm going to go with, let me use, well, actually these are good. These are really good mouse traps. So these are like the T-Rexes. Uh, they're selling them at Walmart, but they're similar to T-Rex traps. So if you look at this, let's see up close. Oh, that's a really good picture. So you see how it's got those little holes on it? I recommend using one of these, the jaw trap. I think they work better than like a, uh, like a regular spring loaded, like metal, you know, you know, the type with the metal bar that snaps down. Uh, I think these work a lot better. There's a lot more, uh, it's a better, it's a, it's a, it's a touchier trigger. You can put the bait down inside that little hole right there. Or a trick that I learned from another exterminator, you can actually take and tie with either a piece of kite string or fishing line uh, or even a bread tie. I've seen people use bread ties. You can put a piece of like uh, pink insulation and like tie it up, tie it to it or a piece of like um, foam or cotton because you just take the cotton ball out of the top of your like Tylenol bottle. Just take that out and tie it down to the spring trap and then load it like you normally would. And what happens is with mice and rats both love nesting material, especially the softer and the, and the cuddlier it is. They like to grab that stuff and they'll pull at it thinking they can pull it off the trap. And of course it's attached with a string. And so just like the carrot on a stick trip that, that, that uh, you know, Elmer Fudd would always use on Bugs Bunny, when they pull that string, the trap triggers. And so that's actually a really effective way if you're having problems catching mice uh, you can do that on a snap trap, and it will it will catch them sometimes when they get bait shy, where they're 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 not wanting the peanut butter, they're not wanting cheese, they're not wanting mayonnaise, they're not wanting anything down inside the trap, and so you can sometimes use a piece of nesting material to kind of make them want to go to the trap if the, if bait's not working, and so that's a little tip that actually does work. Uh, so Alton says thank you. I swapped out box spring for bed frame, vinyl mattress cover. Uh, just apply to all of that then. Well, what I usually would recommend is taking off the mattress cover and leaving the mattress cover off of the mattress. If you're going to treat for bed bugs, uh, take that completely off and then treat your mattress and live without the mattress cover for a couple months while you're killing the uh, um, while you're killing the bed bugs because you I don't like to treat the vinyl covers. I don't think that they it's very effective. I know some exterminators will. But I require that my customer remove those before I'm able to treat the mattress because I don't think that the chemical is going to last as long on a vinyl cover. It will wipe off. It'll wipe off on the sheets. Just putting the sheets off, the sheets will take it off of the bed. And so I don't recommend using a vinyl cover. I recommend taking that off. Pagan Root said that uh, I only ever saw what one bed bug. I was lying on the couch watching TV and I saw it crawling. That's the reason that you're getting kicked out and it won't let your, your comment be viewed. Uh, but she was coming to get me. It freaked me out. But you could kill that. Just kill your kill your bed bugs. You know, treat your mattress, treat your box springs, treat your sofas and everything. Uh, Joseph said that's a funny trick. Yeah, it does work though. You can, you absolutely can tie a little string to that trigger pad, and it does work. It will work. Uh, mice like peanuts. They do. They do like peanuts. They'll even take a peanut shell. They'll take a peanut shell. Don't even have to have a peanut in it. Just the fact that it had peanuts in the shell, especially if they're salted, because all animals need salt. And mammals like um, mice, uh, rats, uh, lots of animals love salt. And so you can use like a salty shell for a peanut and tie it to the trap too, and it works. 
Um, Pagan Root says, thanks to you, I've learned a lot about these demons, so thank you. A fisherman said, I've heard of that insulation trick with the mouse and rat traps. Studies show the wider the trigger plate on the T-Rex and the other plastic snap trap catches significantly more rodents than the traditional trap. That's correct. Those little bitty brass things don't really work that well. The, the bigger the trigger uh, pad, the better. It absolutely does help. Um, so, yeah, but the T-Rex traps are great. And I like them because they've got this little spot right here. So, let's say you've got roof rats. And this, let's, let's assume this is a rat trap. This is not. This is actually a mouse trap. But let's assume this is a rat trap. You could take a zip tie and you can, uh, like if you've got roof rats coming in on your rafters, you could take that and tie it to a rafter with a zip tie. And when the rat runs across the rafter, it gets snapped in a snap trap. And you could put like three or four of them in a row and you can catch rats that way. So if you've got problems with rats coming in, let's say they've got, say they're coming in on like a, I don't know, a pipe leading into the side of your house, or maybe there's a power line that runs across and they're running down the wall and they're coming in through a pipe that go like a conduit or something like that. You can tie one of these to the conduit and when the rat comes down, it gets caught in the conduit. It gets caught in the trap you know, on the conduit. So... Let's see. So the fisherman said, I've heard about the insulation. Okay, so that was the last one. Oh, I hope everybody is doing all right tonight. I know that uh, it's been a... I don't know how everybody's... Farron, being April 1st, haven't had a single person say April Fool's yet. Not, not one person has tried to pull an April Fool's joke on me today. I'm going to have to figure out one for next year. For you guys. <laughs> I have vents that fall out at times. Yeah, yeah, that's what'll happen. I have that problem in my crawl space. So I've, I've been needing to get new uh, vents they make for crawl space doors. I mean, not crawl space doors, but the crawl space cross ventilation. I need to get new um, new vents because the ones I've got are just the little grates and they fall out all the time. And I need to get the ones that will automatically open and shut with the weather because you can get those at Lowe's. I think they're like $18, $19 and put them in. I just haven't had the time. I'll work all the time. And if I'm not working, I'm here with you guys. So, <laughs> so. so, like I said, you guys, I'll go ahead and, and drop a, oh, well, happy birthday, Pagan Roots. Yeah, one of my friend's birthdays today, too. Um, let's see, how do I get back to my main page? There we go. Home. I'm new to computers. It's obvious. What about bats in the roof? Most annoying and difficult to get rid of. Oh, they're easy. So the way I get rid of bats, well, they're not easy. It depends on how you view easy. So um, you get yourself quarter inch. So if you go to Lowe's and you order one quarter inch uh, hardware cloth. There you go. Get yourself a roll of quarter inch hardware cloth, which is, let's see, where is that stuff? I think this is it here, isn't it? So these little, now this is, this is bigger. This isn't quarter inch. This is like, I think it, this might be quarter inch. I think it's half inch though. But anyway, you get this. And where your louvers, your louver vent, so if you've got gable vent, so these. So you see these v, these vents like this. You'll see these on the sides of your uh, attic where they allow for your attic to ventilate. You need these. You can't close these off. But a lot of times there's a screen on the inside, like a screen door screen on the inside that uh, wild animals like squirrels, bats, birds will actually end up pushing in because it's nothing but a piece of screen door screening. And so what you can do is you can get this and you fashion it on the outside of this right now before the bats start coming in because they, they migrate. So depending on where you live in the U.S., uh, in Virginia, bats actually migrate south. 
for the winter because the mosquitoes and things all die off through the winter, so they don't really have anything to eat. So they fly south to where they can find the mosquitoes that they use that they eat to survive. And so during the winter, you can go and you can actually seal up over these holes with this uh, hardware cloth like this. It not only will it keep the uh, bats out, but it'll also keep squirrels. It'll keep rats out and because it's, the quarter inch are the tiny holes. And you can just get yourself some drywall screws and some washers and just attach it. And it looks nice. You know, you can cut a nice square and it'll look really nice. I usually take it and uh, let's see, I usually take it like around the very edge, like these little corners right here. And I'll fold it around on itself and, and kind of screw, like put a screw in here and put a screw in here, the little ones. Uh, and yeah, so that that's one way you can keep the bats from getting into your attic. But bats do bring a breed of bed bugs. In fact, that's where a lot of people believe, like scientists and stuff believe, that bed bugs came from bats ultimately. That they, uh, whether it was from caves or just bats living around people, that the, the bed bugs that come from bats, which are called bat bugs, and there is a difference. So if you do a bat bug comparison to a bed bug, so this is the picture you see people use mostly is this one right here. This is a bed bug on this side, and this is a bat bug on this side, and I don't know how well this is showing on YouTube or not, but let's see if it'll actually pull. Well, it won't, it's, not, it's a really, really crappy picture. But um, the hair on this, the bat bugs are extremely hairy, but to look at them with a naked eye, they look identical. But they believe that maybe that the bat bug at some point when it started living with humans actually started to prefer humans over bats. So... They will come from bats. So let's see. Dee Dee. Uh, what about bats? Okay. Uh, thank you for trying to help us. Lots of people won't do anything unless it involves money. But I don't care. You know. Honestly, so I, I get a lot of flack because I started this Amazon page right here. I get a lot of flack from people. Because, yes, I do get like a 3% commission on every sale that goes through this page. In fact, if you go to this page right here, my, my Amazon page, and let's say you're, you're here and you're like, okay, well, let's, uh, maybe you've got bed bugs. Okay, so you're going to go and you're going to put Crossfire. Okay, so I'm going to add this to my cart. And then you go down and you're like, oh, you know what? Maybe I want to get some of this here too. And you click that. I get a commission off of that too. If you click the sofa cushion and decide to buy a sofa cushion, I would get a commission off of that. Anything that you go to from this page, anything you buy from this page, it's put in your cart, whether it's, you know, it's the domino effect. So you start here and then you get lost in the rabbit hole that is Amazon and you buy something else, I get commission on that too. But the only reason I do this is because my website um, is right here. This is for my business. This is my local business, Green Acres Pest Control. And so this is my actual business site. I can't put this, I can't put this here because I'm not trying to sell products. I have, I have a spot so people can see it and they can go and they can find what they need. But I'm ultimately, this is my business. This is what I do. I have people call me. I go to their house. I kill their bugs. See, there, there I am. There's me, and there's Rory and Emma and my kids. And so this is me. There's one of my YouTube videos there. And so this is what I do for a living. This, this is not a living. I don't make hardly anything off of Amazon. I just have that here for you. So you guys can find what you need, a reputable source that you can find what you need to get. Because people tell me all the time, they say, uh, well, the reason that I have to hire an exterminator is because I can't get the same thing you get. And that is not true. In fact, I've heard other exterminators telling their customers, you can't buy the same thing I buy. You have to get it, uh, you have to or hire me. The only way you're going to get rid of your bugs is by hiring me. And that's not true. That's, that's a lie. And there's no sense in lying to people. Why do you need to lie to people? Need to lie to people. <laughs> there's no reason to lie. Yeah, you can you can go to Amazon. You can buy the same thing I buy. The same exact chemicals I buy. In fact, if you don't even want to go to Amazon, if you don't like to shop on Amazon, you can go to do your own pest control right here. Do my own. There's one. 
there's two different sites. So there's Do My Own Pest Control, and there's Do It Yourself Pest Control. So these are both websites that you could buy things. So let's see, let's go Crossfire. In fact, I recommend to do this because there you go. There, now see, that Crossfire there is starting at 4502. That's for the, the small bottle. But you can get it on Amazon. If you go to Amazon, you can get it for 36. So it's cheaper on Amazon. Well, 3716 with free shipping. And so then you go to uh, do it yourself. So let's see, do my own. And this is what I recommend everybody do. Shop around. There's Crossfire right there. So let's click that and see how much do my own is charging. They're charging $45 a bottle too. So it's pretty much $45 a bottle unless you buy it on Amazon. If you buy it on Amazon, it's a little cheaper. And so that's one reason why I use Amazon because Amazon is usually cheaper. And for those that watch my channel who have been, you know, subscribed to me for very long, you know I'm out, I'm out to save people money. That's my goal is to save you money. I don't want you to spend too much to get rid of bugs. You really, even, even locally, I'm a good $20 cheaper than the competition on a monthly pest control for most, most of the competition because I just feel like I can do it for less. I offer people the ability to hire a affordable exterminator that still does good work and doesn't have to charge an arm and a leg to do it. Um, so, but how do you kill those already in the roof? You cannot kill bats. They're protected. So you can't kill bats. You just have to wait until they migrate and then seal them out of the house, DD. Uh, Alton says, I think we should all take a moment and be grateful that bugs are small. Imagine if they were big. I'm, I'm, somebody says, some people say I'm a pretty big pest. Uh, learn something every time I tune in. Cheers. <laughs> uh, Pagan Root said, all righty, folks, bedtime. Oh, well, good night, Pagan. Nice to see that you stopped by. Thanks for coming in. Uh, Samantha says, how long is Crossfire good for after mixing? 24 hours. You don't want to use it past 24 hours. It can be stored as long as it's not mixed. Uh, Brian says, so bomb in two to four weeks get the eggs that hatched after killing the live ones so bombing you don't want to use like a a bug bomb you want to use crossfire and treat and you treat every two weeks uh, samantha says i also purchased the flash light with the glasses how do i use them though okay so the reason i have that so okay let me explain some of the parts of my my site this could be confusing this is what people say people have told me this all right, it's not that simple. If you go to Bed Bug Supplies and you click here, and I've got this flashlight here, all right? This is a black light. This is used to find bed bugs and eggs, mainly eggs, because the eggs are white and they'll fluoresce. So you can wear the glasses and you can shine the flashlight around the edges of the bed and you can see the eggs. The eggs will stand out. Uh, they look like, let me see if I've got any, because this... They should have laid an egg in here by now. I would imagine that there's an egg in here. Well, let me show you. Let me give you an idea. So these are my bed bugs. Let me bring them out. So just to give you an idea, here's a ruler. Okay? There's one inch right there. So if you hold the bed bug up to the ruler, this gives you an idea of the size of an adult bed bug, it is not wanting to focus. It's supposed to autofocus, but it's not wanting to focus. Anyway, that's your bed bug there. You see? The poop is right there. You see those little pieces, those little bitty dots? That's their poop. That's about how big a bed bug egg is, just to give you an idea for size comparison. So that's how big their that's how big a bed bug egg is. You can see all the phases. You can even see their poop. And so um, the black light will actually cause the eggs to fluoresce and you will be able to see them. So that's what that light is for. That's why I have it there. I, I have it there because people have problems finding bed bugs. And so when I was making this page, when I was making this page and saying, well, what, what, what do I use? Let me think, what do I use? Now, I don't use these little heat rooms. But this is for mainly for people who can't, who are worried about like their shoes or their, maybe they've got 
uh, dry clean only clothes that they're concerned about that, that maybe be pretty, I mean, if you figure on suits, maybe even a wedding dress that you don't want to risk bed bugs getting into, you can put them into one of these little rooms and you can kill the bed bugs in your garments and you don't have to worry about, you know, them being in your clothes. But ultimately, like I said, the bed bugs are going to eventually come to you to bite you. And as long as you've treated your bed, they should die. Um, but so, yeah, and I've got like the steam cleaner, uh, mainly for, because people will, and this is a really good model. I love Bissell. Bissell makes amazing products as far as steam cleaning, but at least I think this is a Bissell. I thought it was a Bissell. Yeah, it is. That's the Bissell. But, um, but yeah, I recommend those for cleaning mattresses. So if you don't want to throw away your mattress and you're concerned that, uh, you've got bed bugs living in your mattress. You can absolutely steam clean the mattress. If you've already killed the bed bugs in your mattress, but you don't like all the poop stains and stuff like that, you can. That actually will take the stains out of your mattress. And so I recommend that for the mattresses. And then you've got the um, vacuum cleaner, you know, to just vacuum the bed bugs and stuff. So that's what I was recommending. But actually, I need to change this because I found a better vacuum that's even uh, so good for doing bed bugs. But um, it's a little expensive. I don't know if I'd want to put it up here. But it's the um, the Dyson handheld cordless vacuum is amazing. It's it is it is amazing, amazing for vacuuming. I used it to detail my car. It's it is amazing. I love it. But um, I gave it to my I got it for my wife as a present, and then I got to use it to detail the van. Lucky me. What do you think about that? You buy your wife a vacuum, and you get to use it. So let's see. Um, never use bombs. Yes, Joseph, I agree. Never use bombs for bed bugs. Never, never, ever. Uh, never use bombs. In Canada, uh, and all sorts of other insecticides, resinicides, pesticides, can only be bought, sold, and used by licensed operators. Uh, not everyone can buy those products here. Yes, I understand. I understand. Canada is really strict. Uh, Brian says bomb powder spray. Hit them a few weeks after kill hatched eggs. Is That is the idea. No. So the idea, I don't recommend anyone ever use dust for bed bugs. Ever. Never, 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 never. Never, ever. I never use dust. I never used it. I have not used dust for bed bugs in over three years. I have used Crossfire and I have used Alpine. This, this ingredient right here, Crossfire, and then this right here, Alpine. They're the only things I have used for bed bugs in the last three years. That's it. I have one tank I have mixed Crossfire in. I have one tank for Alpine. And we, me and my son go in. He goes through and does all the baseboards throughout the entire house with Alpine. I treat all of the furniture with Crossfire. And people don't have bed bugs. Because Crossfire is three active ingredients. Alpine is one. So in essence, you're, you're using four different chemicals in the house the likeliness that the bed bugs are going to be immune to four different things is slim to none. It just does not, it just doesn't happen. Now, yeah, one ingredient, yes. Two ingredients is possible, but four, four for every ingredient you add, you lessen the chance that the bed bugs are going to have a resistance and that they're going to die after the very first treatment. So that's the way I always do it. If I go back, if I have to go back for a follow-up, if, and I have had a few, like I said earlier, I have had a few follow-ups I had to do last year. I use Crossfire only. I don't use Alpine because there have been a few tests in some of the universities. In, Virginia. in fact, uh, Virginia Tech actually did a test on some of the different pesticides, and they're finding that the bed bugs are slowly starting to develop an immunity to Alpine. And so if I go into a house on a, on a follow-up, I do not use Alpine. I assume I'm dealing with a chemical-resistant bed bug strain, and I just use Crossfire. I never have to do a third treatment. And so I use Crossfire on the baseboards. I use Crossfire everywhere. So that's why I'm here, and I recommend that you use Crossfire uh, on your first treatment and do the entire treatment with Crossfire uh, if you're concerned about having to buy a whole bunch of different pesticides and you just want to buy just the one. Um, I always have Alpine. I use Alpine for lots of things. I use it for roaches. I use it for ants. I use it for bed bugs. I use it for fleas. So I always have it mixed. And so I just use them both. And I very rarely have to go back. I just, I just don't hardly ever have to go back. I do not recommend bug bombs because you're just going to make your problem worse. I never recommend dust because you're only going to make your problem worse. 
I'm here to tell you what works, not what you're going to fail. You know, I don't want you to fail. I want you to succeed. Um, so the fisherman says you can also use a bat cone for bat exclusion. That is true. So I have done that. I'll tell you a trick too. If you, if you fashion your hardware cloth, because it comes on a spool and it will naturally spring back to the wall. So you can use it and you leave your bottom like, about that much space I can't I can't explain it what three inches of space at the bottom so it springs back to the wall the bats will actually push it they'll push it out of the way when they leave and they'll spring back and shut now the problem is you want to make sure that you don't have any more bats in the attic before you put those last few screws in the bottom usually give it like two or three days and they're usually completely out by then um, I have hardwood floors bedroom I cannot find bed bugs anywhere, but found one on the bed and have been being bit at night. Um, I live in an eight-unit apartment complex. I feel like I'm never going to win. Oh, you can get rid of them. It's not a problem. Best recommendations for bed bug spray when going in the woods and hiking. You shouldn't find... Oh, bug spray. Bug spray. Off. Deet. I should do that. I should have a camping. I, I should do like a camping section. For people that camp and don't like bugs. I hate bugs. I hate bugs. Every time I go camping, I get attacked by mosquitoes. I love to camp. But I hate bugs. I really hate mosquitoes. And mosquitoes. I don't mind spiders. I don't mind ants. I don't. I mean, I know they're around. But mosquitoes? I hate mosquitoes. I really hate mosquitoes. Uh, do you need to vacuum every day? Only when dealing with fleas. You don't need to vacuum every day for bed bugs or other bugs. Um... Jan Adams says, how does dust make the problem worse? Okay, so using an insecticide dust like DE will only make them aggravated. It will drive them into other rooms of the house. It will drive them up to the ceiling. It will drive them into places you don't want them. And so diatomaceous earth is probably one of your worst options other than store-bought pesticides. It's one of the worst options for bed bugs. It the thing is is that it is so hard. Let me know if you guys can see me. Cause it said my stream got disconnected. So I'll just continue talking and you guys let me know if you can't hear me or not. But um One of the problems with using a dust is that it's very hard to apply it properly. It gets on everything. It gets in everything. And it's very harmful to breathe it in. So it's not good for your health. And the problem is, is so the way that a dust works, like especially, let's use diatomaceous earth and Semexa. Those are the two that people always want to say, use this, use this, it's great. All right, so they both work identical. They're, they, they do the same thing. The, the design of DE and Semexa, the, the, the overall idea is to uh, dehydrate the bug. Right? That's the way they work. Whether it's Semexa, because Semexa is mainly silica dust is all it is. And then you've got uh, silica dioxide is what it is. But you've got uh, DE, which is diatoms and silica dioxide. So it's like it's basically the exact same thing. And so what happens is when the bug crawls through the dust, it causes them, it sticks to them, and it makes them dry out. So that's the way it kills them. It dehydrates them. Um, the problem is, is that if you're not, if you're not applying it properly, um, which is it's very hard to do. It is a skill. It took me months to learn and develop the skill of using a dust to where it actually is going to work. So if I go into my kitchen and I drop a case of mason jars, all right, and the glass shatters all over the floor, what human being is going to walk through the kitchen with glass all over the floor? I mean, you could see it, right? You're not going to walk on the floor with bare feet when there's glass all over the floor. No one in their right mind would do that unless they're Bruce Willis trying to escape a burning tower, okay, or terrorists or whatever, on Christmas. Okay, so the point is, is that there's glass all over the floor. 
you're not going to want to walk across the glass. So what you do, you sweep it up. You sweep it up, you get rid of it, you don't walk through it. If you put dust out for a bug, the and especially if it works like diatomaceous earth, where it actually causes like little minute little lacerations in their exoskeleton and it causes them to dehydrate and they see it and they know it's there, they're not going to crawl through it for the same reason that you don't walk through broken glass. The bugs are naturally repelled by it. They know if they walk through it, it's going to hurt them. They're not idiots. They, do, they understand how silicates work. They will not walk through it. So which the way that you get a dust to work is you get one of these bellows dusters and I'm going to explain it to you. I can explain it. It's it's easier to explain than it is to. So this is this is not a bellows duster. I, I wouldn't even use this type of duster for uh, like a roaches or bed bugs or something. Let me see where I just saw it. It was on one of these. Is it bed bugs? Yep, there we go. All right. So this is the type of duster I use. This is a bellows hand duster. This is the kind I use. So what you do is you fill it to about that, you see that little second secondary spring right there in the middle. So you've got the top spring, the middle spring, and the bottom spring. In that middle, you fill it half full. So you fill it half full of dust. You shake it up really good, and then you flip it upside down so that the spout is on the top, not on the bottom, on the top. So what you've done is you've created a cloud inside the duster, and you're not puffing out a big clod of dust you're you're puffing out smoke it looks like smoke when it comes out of the end of the duster but it's really dust and so what you do is you put the end of that tip that little black tip you put that tip into the crack in the wall and you puff really lightly like you barely squeeze it just enough to where it will smoke out of the end inside the wall and what that does is it is it puffs all around and it will penetrate in through because just that little bit of air that forces it because the particulate is so tiny, it will puff around like a cloud. That is how you use a dust. And it is so hard to learn. It, it is a skill and you might get it right the first time, but it took me several tries to learn how to actually use a duster correctly. And even like that's the best way to kill yellow jackets is if you have like alpine dust and you put a half full of alpine dust and kill yellow jackets, it's amazing for yellow jackets, and it works. It's the best thing for yellow jackets. Better than gasoline, better than anything for yellow jackets. But the point is, is that if you don't know how to use it, you could end up hurting yourself, and it just won't work. And so all you've done at the end of the day is you've put a bunch of dust everywhere, you made a big mess, and it's harmful to you, and it doesn't kill the bugs. And so that's why I don't recommend dust, because for one, you don't need to, it's, I feel like it's overkill. If you have crossfire, that's all you really need to kill bed bugs nowadays. You don't need to do dust. You don't need to do all this extra stuff like mattress encasements and all this crap that people do, and they spend thousands of dollars. You don't have to spend that kind of money. You can get rid of bed bugs fairly easily now. It's, they're not hard to kill. Don't listen to people that tell you they're hard to kill. They're not. They're easy to kill. I kill them all the time. I'm teaching you how to kill them. I know how to kill them. These are the tools I use to kill them. They're not that hard to get rid of. Oh, you can get cheaper Alpine too. Just so you know, if you go to the bed bug supply page, I actually have, I haven't updated all of my links yet, but if you go to here and you see the crossfire, the Alpine right here, these are packets. You can get packets. So you don't have to get that big bottle that's like $80 or $170 or whatever. You can get these. This is, let me see, how many is this? This is five. Five uh, 35 ounce packets which is how many grams? 10 grams. So one pack is 10 grams. So you would use three of these for 30 grams to kill bed bugs. That's what you use. It says on the label between 10 and 30 grams, but use 30 grams to kill bed bugs. That's what I mix for. So, and that's cheap. That's 25 bucks. That's a lot cheaper than 180, you know, which if you go back and you look at this, like this canister, this is what I buy. I buy this, but this is 500 grams. This isn't 10 grams, it's 500 grams. And uh, it's $180, see, 180 So you spend a lot of money on this, and you if it's just you and, and you're not just doing it for yourself and you're not, you know, you don't own a pest control business, you can definitely go cheaper. 
and uh, there's no reason to buy this whole big huge container and then have a whole bunch left over. Oh, no problem, Sam. I don't mind. I'm happy to help. Sam, Samantha says, you're awesome. I can't thank you enough for the priceless information you provide. Um, you could help me. The way you help me is you go to my YouTube channel and you click subscribe right there. I've got donate buttons here, but you don't have to do any of that. You just subscribe. Just click this and subscribe. Now, I'm not going to sign in because I'm already subscribed to myself. Might as well. If I ever have problems with pest control or anything, I could just go watch my videos. So, I'm, I tell horrible jokes. It's, I'm not a comedian. I need to, definitely don't need to quit my day job. <sighs> it's awful the dust is. I should never have used it. Uh, they shed faster than it works. Um, yeah, that's true, too. That's true. So Joseph did mention, um, so with a bed bug, the younger generations actually shed their skin. So if you were to cause lacerations to the exoskeleton of a juvenile bed bug, and it comes up and then it sheds its skin, you really haven't done anything either. And so that's another reason that dust really doesn't work that well because dust takes a while. It actually takes, if you use a pesticide, all right, let's say we use Crossfire, all right, which that's what I always talk about. I'm of the, I, I joke with people, I say I'm a member of the Church of Crossfire. But um, if, if you use Crossfire, when it's wet, it kills them within five minutes. Once it's dry, it takes about two to four hours for a bed bug to die. When a bed bug crawls through diatomaceous earth, it can take several days for a bed bug to die. Not two to four hours, but several days. And by the time it's ready to keel over, it's very possible it could have just shed its skin and had a whole new exoskeleton. And that's the thing. You, you need to understand that dust is very slow. Now, while it works on things like roaches and stuff, but not DE, like boric acid, you could use boric acid for cockroaches. It works really, really well. In the same manner I said, like when you, when you puff it like a cloud where it's like, it looks like smoke that comes out of the end of the duster, when you use boric acid that way, the, the, the roach actually, what they're doing is they're crawling through it, and it doesn't kill them when they crawl through it. They actually have to ingest it. But roaches will bathe themselves like a cat. So when they, when they go over to a corner somewhere, in fact, if you ever look at a roach, if you've, if you've ever seen a roach, well, I mean, not everybody saves bugs in a jar like me, but uh, if, you, if you've ever actually witnessed a roach, if, if they go into a jar, you put them in like a little jar and watch them. If you have problems with roaches, watch them. They will take their hands and they'll, they'll like lick them like a cat and they'll rub them. They'll rub themselves with their hands and stuff all the time and they're licking and rubbing all the time just like a cat. And so what happens is when the roach walks through the boric acid, they pick it up on the pads of their feet, and then when they're cleaning themselves, they're actually licking the boric acid off of their feet, and they're getting a lethal dose that will kill them. So that's how boric acid works for roaches. Dust doesn't work that way on every bug. They just, it just doesn't, it's not the tool for every bug. It's a tool for some bugs, but not every bug. Brian says, opinion on trap for the four legs of the bed, where they get caught climbing up to the floor. They don't work. So interceptors work sometimes, most of the time they don't work. A lot of people believe that um, interceptors, that, they're, that, that, that bed bugs can't climb a slick surface. That's not true. I have, where is my jar? Okay, I have a jar here. Now it's, it's, it's bumpy on the outside. This has got bed bugs in it too. I save all kinds of bed bugs. I got bed bugs everywhere. So this jar is slick glass on the inside. The bed bugs actually crawled all the way up around the lid of this, of this glass. Um, it's not hard for them to crawl up a slick surface. I've found them living around the tops of bathroom stalls where they have the slick vinyl wall. I've found them living there. So interceptors don't work. The only ones I've seen that actually remotely work are the ones that actually are like sticky paper that stick almost like a, a like a double-sided tape that sticks to the leg of the bed that's the only thing i've seen that actually will catch them on the legs and and and, and trap them yeah you can ask me questions about anything jan if you want to know about fleas i can answer some my nose itching it's pollen season i hate pollen 
But yes, Jan, I'm actually going to get off here in just a, a little bit. I've been live for quite a quite a while now, and I'm going to have to get off here. But uh, if you have a question for Fleas, please ask me before I before I log out. Alicia says, Jason, uh, when I know I don't any more bed, don't have any more bed bugs. Oh wait, okay, so I'm not quite understanding the question, but what I think you're asking me is how do I know that the bed bugs are gone after I've treated? I haven't been bit. How long do I need to wait before I know that the bed bugs are actually gone? And the industry standard is 30 days. Um, typically, it's 30 days after you've treated. Now, it's not always 30 days because if you've had an exterminator come in and use something like, I don't know, uh, bifenthrin in your house that lasts for 90 days, it's highly propellant then after 90 days, you very well could get bit again because the bed bugs are going to come back out as soon as that pesticide is no longer active. If you use something like Crossfire where the bed bugs don't see the chemical, they don't know it's there, then yeah, about 30 days after you get your last bite. If you haven't had bites for 30 days, you should they should be dead by then. Uh, the fisherman says, do you ever kill dust mites? Uh, mites die. The mites just die. I mean, you can't, a lot of places you can't spray for mites, like the beds and stuff. I'm sure when I do crossfire jobs, I probably kill a lot of mites that are in the bed, like dust mites that live in the mattresses. But as far as actually treating for dust mites, no, nah, I don't treat for them. But I'm sure they die from whatever I do when I do general pest control. I'm sure they die. Uh, Jan says, how do you treat for fleas and can you treat a car? Yes, yes, and yes, and yes. So... What you do is you go to Amazon. I'm going to post a link here. First, before you go to Amazon, go to YouTube. Go to my page, which you're on, my channel. After you hit the subscribe button, uh, go, to video, go to the videos, like videos right here. And go to search and search fleas. And I uh, see bombs don't work, but here's the here's the video right here. It's how to get rid of fleas in four easy steps. I'm gonna copy it actually, and I'm gonna paste it to you. All right, that actually, if you go to this video and you click the description, so you scroll down and you see where it says like where it says Green Acres Pest Control LLC. Check out our flea blog here. This is actually one that I wrote from a website. But then if you click watch how to get rid of fleas guaranteed, you click here, show more. There's the Amazon link that I just gave you. There's the uh, there's a donation link. Don't worry about that one. Uh, schedule a time to talk to me. Okay, Alpine WSG. This is what I recommend. It says mix 30 grams with water to equal one gallon of finished solution. There's the product. If you click here, it'll take you right to the link so you can find the Amazon, the, the Alpine right there. And then uh, this is what I recommend for outside. If you're having problems with them around outside your house, the bifen three grams. You don't even have to watch the video. You pause it like I did. It's an ad. And just look at my description. I always put this in my description based on what the video is about. So let's say if it was a bed bug, you would scroll down. You would see a link for Crossfire. If it was uh, spiders, you'd go down. You'd scroll. You'd probably see a link for Demon Max because... This is what I recommend for fleas on the outside of a home and also for spiders. And so that's what I recommend you do is just go to that video and look it up because it's, it's right there. All the links are right there. I try, I try really hard to make the video work for people, but very few people actually click the description, but the description is really... Actually, you could even go down here if you go all the way down. It'll actually tell you what the video is about. It says... Uh, Step one, identify the problem. Step two, preparation. It actually, in step one, identify the problem. Make sure that you actually have fleas. Many people never even think the yard is infested, but fleas come from outside in. Whether it's on, uh, whether it's on you or your pets, man, you can tell I'm horrible grammar. Uh, so be sure to check your yard. Step two, preparation. Make sure you pick up everything off the floors, your home, trim your yard right before treatment, read your labels. Uh, step three, treat inside with Alpine WSG. Treat outside with bifen granules and the yard listed above. Uh, and then step four, preventing the problem. Be sure to keep pets treated for fleas. Treat your yard and try to keep wildlife out. So it's really easy. You know, you don't even have to watch the video. You can just read the description for the for the step by step directions. 
Dank says, I found a baby nymph bed bug two nights ago crawling on my nightstand and it's van. These are hard to get rid of. No, if you just treat with the right chemicals, they're not hard to get rid of. They're not hard. The problem, okay, so if you're continuing to have problems with bed bugs, I'm going to give you like a hard truth thing. If you're having problems getting rid of bed bugs and you've been fighting these bed bugs for months and you've been using Crossfire and you've been following my directions, there's only two different reasons why you're probably having problems getting rid of your bed bugs. One, you're, you're continuing to reinfest your house. You may not know how you're doing it. It may be from your car. Uh, I actually had a call yesterday from a lady who continues to reinfest her house from her car and her exterminator won't treat her car, but you can treat a car for bed bugs. You can, especially if you use Crossfire. So that's probably what is happening or you're not mixing the Crossfire correctly. I have people that take and they try to measure out half of a bottle of Crossfire. One of the problems is, and they mix like half a gallon. Now I've said to do this. I recommend doing this, but it's six and a half ounces plus enough water to equal a half a gallon. If you're pouring your water into a half a gallon and then you're adding your Crossfire, you're actually mixing your Crossfire too weak. You need to mix it with the proper amount of liquid to the proper amount of water or Crossfire, the proper amount of Crossfire to the proper amount of water. It's actually, what is it, 128 ounces equal a gallon, half of 128 ounces, which is 64. So it's 64, no, actually, no, no, it's 64 ounces minus six and a half. So if you take a calculator, and you have to do this, it's chemistry, okay? 64 minus uh, 6.5 equals 57 and a half ounces. So it's 57 and a half ounces of water plus six and a half ounces of Crossfire equals half a gallon of finished solution. That's what you're going to use to treat your bugs. If you're just eyeballing it, you're not mixing your chemical correctly. And so uh, if you need to use, you know, you, you may need to buy something like a graduated cylinder or something that you can use to actually measure it out so you can get the proper measurement for your spray bottle so that you're mixing it correctly. Because more than likely, that's what you're doing. Because I have not run into a single chemically immune bed bug to Crossfire yet. I've been using this stuff for over three years, almost four years now. And so I don't think it's an immunity issue. I think it's really user error or reinfestation. Um, how did you get the bed bugs in the first place? Go back and think. How did you get them? Maybe they didn't come on the family member you thought. Maybe they came from a friend. Maybe they came from your office. Maybe they came from where you work. You know, there's lots of different places you can bring bed bugs from that you would never think. I've done homes where people were bringing them in from the movie theater. I did homes where I did a home for a guy where his nurse was bringing him into the house. And he was, I mean, he's pretty much a paraplegic and he can't really take care of himself very well. But his nurse had bed bugs in her home and she was coming in to help take care of him bringing bed bugs into his house. So this is something that happens. You, you may not realize that's how you're getting them. Um, I had a guy one time I was servicing where they had, a, uh, they had an in-home nurse and she was bringing cockroaches in the house in her pocketbook. So you can absolutely get them from, I mean, people you wouldn't expect. You know, a lot of people would not expect the nurse to bring big, to be bringing either cockroaches or bed bugs into their home, but this does happen. Um, I had a customer that did uh, transport. She used to do. She used to pick people up from their house and take them to CVS, Walgreens. Uh, she would take them to their doctor's appointments, stuff like that. And the people would get in her car. And one day, she actually had a guy that was going to get in her car. And he had bed bugs crawling all over his clothing. Now, if he had gotten in her car, she she said, "No, no, wait." I've got three more people I've got to ride around today. You can't get in my car. I'm going to call the office and have them send a special car just for you today so that we can treat the car and kill the bed bugs before they spread to anyone else. But if she had let him get in her car, 
then everyone that used that car after him had the possibility of taking bed bugs home. So you can you can get them from Uber, you can get them from Amazon deliveries, you can get them from uh, Instacart. You know, you think about it. If your Instacart driver has bed bugs at home and they go to you know Target, Kroger, Walmart, wherever, and they buy your groceries for you, they put your groceries in their trunk. They bring the groceries home to you. They put them in your house. The bed bugs are on the groceries. So it may not be your cousin. It may not be your nephew. It may not be your, you know, estranged, you know, whatever, children from an estranged marriage or something like that. It may be that you're getting them from, an, from a spot you just might not realize. So try to look, try to cover all of your bases when you're dealing with a bed bug problem. And that's how you narrow it down to get rid of them and be successful. So... Hopefully this has been helpful tonight. I've got to run. It's it's been great talking with everybody. I really appreciate all the people that came out tonight. Uh, but it's been about an hour, hour and a half actually. Oh wow, it's been yeah, it's been about an hour and a half. So I gotta get going. Uh, let's get some sleep so I can work tomorrow. Y'all have a great night. I really appreciate it. And uh, like I said, stay tuned. I got a really good video coming up Tuesday. I don't want to spoil it or anything, but. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can catch all my videos that come out on Tuesdays and, of course, my live stream every Thursday night. And like I said, we didn't have any calls come in tonight, but anytime you want to, that phone number right there, you can call in and ask a question live on the air. So I will see you next week. Guys, have a really great night, and I appreciate it.